and I'm going to read them out, chapter and verse, and you can check them out as I go along. So firstly, I'd like to say one of the most authenticating proofs for the inspiration of the Bible, which at the same time authenticate the claims of Jesus Christ as the Son of God and the only Saviour of the world, are the many fulfilled prophecies which find their fulfilment in the person and life of Christ Jesus of Nazareth. We have in the Holy Scripture an array of prophecies which extend, which extend over hundreds of years and yet find their complete fulfilment in the short 30 year lifespan of one person. Jesus of Nazareth, many being fulfilled in one day. These prophecies truly accomplished the purpose of the gospel writers as they carefully point to the person, words and works of Jesus Christ. But these have been written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that believing you may have life in his name. John 20 verse 31. But all this has taken place that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Matthew 26, 56. And he said to them, O foolish men and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses... And with all the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself in the scriptures. The reference is Luke 24, verses 25 to 27. Now he said to them, these are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Luke 24, 44. Now the following twenty-five old, the following twenty-five Old Testament prophecies deal with events surrounding the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, including his betrayal, his trial, his death, and his burial. They were uttered by many different voices and over a period of five hundred years. Yet they were all fulfilled within twenty-four hours on the day that he died for the sins of the world. So the first prophecy I'm going to mention is a prophecy relating to relating to Christ's crucifixion. So in the book of Zechariah, if you look at Zechariah 11, chapter tw verse 12, this is what it says. And this is the prophecy. And I said to them, if it is good in your sight, give me my wages. But if not, never mind. So they weighed out 30 shekels of silver as my wages. This prophecy was fulfilled <coughs> in the New Testament in Matthew 26, verses 14 to 15. Then one of the twelve, named Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me to deliver him up to you? And they weighed out to him 30 pieces of silver. So there's prophecy number one. He was betrayed by Judas. Judas sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. The second one that I'm going to read out is that he was betrayed by a friend. And this is relating to Judas still. So the prophecy is in Psalm 55 verses 12 to 14. And it says, for it is not an enemy who reproaches me, then I could bear it. Nor is it one who hates me, who has exalted himself against me, then I could hide myself from him. But it is you, a man, my equal, my companion and my familiar friend. We who had sweet fellowship together walked in the house of God in the throng. Also see Zam. 41 verse 9 and Ze Zechariah 13 verse 6. The fulfilment is Matthew 26 verses 49 to 50. And immediately he went to Jesus and said, Hail Rabbi, and kissed him. This is Judas. And Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. The money was cast to the potter. The money that Judas received. 
In Zechariah 11, 13, the prophecy reads, Then the Lord said to me, Throw it to the potter, that magnificent price of which I was valued by them. So I took the 30 shekels of silver and threw them to the potter in the house of the Lord. We read the fulfilment of this prophecy in Matthew 27, verses 5 to 7. And he threw the pieces of silver into the sanctuary and departed. And he went away and hanged himself. And the chief priest took the pieces of silver and said, It is not lawful to put them into the temple treasury, since it is, since it is the price of blood. And they counselled together, and with the money bought the potter's field as a burial place for strangers. So notice that in, in the, both the prophecy and the fulfilment, we find stated it was silver that were 30 pieces. They were thrown down. They were cast down in the house of the Lord. And the money was used to purchase the potter's field. So these are points to remember in these two prophecies about G Judas betraying Jesus in the actual prophecy and the actual fulfilment. The details are not just strikingly similar, but they're exactly the same. So that's something to, to bear in mind. Also, um, as you remember the story when Jesus was in the garden and they came to take him away, the disciples fled and they left him. So I'm going to give you a prophecy about that now as well in the Old Testament. And I'm going to give you the fulfilment in the new. OK, so in Zechariah 13, verse seven, it says, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man, my associate, declares the Lord of hosts. Strike the shepherd that the sheep may be scattered and I will turn my hand against the little ones. Uh, in Matthew 26, 56, we read this. But all this has taken place that the scripture of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. And we read this also in Mark 14, 27 as well. Um, so also he was accused by false witnesses. In Psalm 35, 11, we read malicious witnesses rise up. They ask me of things that I do not know. And in Matthew 26, 59 to 60. Now the chief priests and the whole council kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order that they might put him to death. And they did not find any, even though many false witnesses came forward. But later on, um, two came forward. Also, Jesus was smitten and he was they spat upon him as well. So we read in Isaiah 50, verse 6, I gave my back to those who strike me and my cheeks to those who pluck out the beard. I did not cover my face from humiliation and spitting. So we read in Matthew 27, 30, and they spat on him and took the reed and began to beat him on the head. What's important here? is that the details correspond in both prophecy and the fulfilment of the prophecy. So it says he was to be smitten. He was to be smitten on the face as well as other parts of the body. See Luke twenty two sixty four. 64. He was to be spat upon and he was to be spitten upon in the face. Prophecy number seven. Jesus was dumb before his accusers, which means he was silent. He kept silent. So in Isaiah 53, 7, we read, he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to slaughter and like a sheep that is silent before its shearers. So he did not open his mouth. We see the fulfilment in Matthew 27, verses 12 to 14. And while he was being accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many things they testify against you? And he did not answer him with regard to even a single charge. So that the governor was quite amazed. 
So this this made me think. I was reading the um, passage in the Bible where Jesus says, "Do not cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them to pieces, tear them to pieces upon the ground." So this made me think. Jesus was silent while he was being falsely accused, and he didn't say a word. And maybe he was thinking. What came to my mind was casting pearls before swine. Because he knew, maybe he knew whatever he said would be torn to pieces because they were trying to frame him. They were whatever he said, whether it's true or not, they were not going to believe him anyway. And they would have just twisted everything he said. So he kept silent. So just a thought anyway. So anyway, he was wounded and he was bruised. In Isaiah 53 verse 5, the prophecy says, He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The, chast the chastising for our well-being fell upon him. And by his scourging we are healed. In Matthew 27, 26 to 29, he sa it says here, Then he released Barabbas for them. But after having Jesus scourged, he delivered him to be crucified. And after weaving a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they kneeled down before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Just bear me one second while I have a quick drink. OK. We know from the scriptures in John nineteen seventeen that Jesus fell under the cross. Then took Jesus, therefore, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. Luke 23, 26 and John nineteen seventeen. When they led him away, they held hold of one Simon of Cyrene coming in from the country and placed in on him the cross to carry behind Jesus. Psalm 109 24 says my knees are weak from fasting and my flesh has grown lean without fatness so evidently the Lord was so weak that his knees gave way under the weight of the heavy cross so they had to put it on another person to carry it um, we know that his hands and feet were pierced in Psalm twenty two sixteen, 16 the prophecy states for dogs have surrounded me a band of evildoers has encompassed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. We find the fulfilment in Luke 23, 33. And when they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one to the right and the other on the left. So, Christ was crucified in the customary Roman manner. The hands and feet being pierced by huge spikes, which fasten the body to the wooden cross. Um, see John, John 20, 25 to 27. Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails. Then he said, then said he, Jesus, Jesus to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands. So Thomas saw the marks of the crucifixion. You can read that yourself, the full chapter. Um, so he was crucified with the thieves in prophecy Isaiah 53, 12. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great and he will divide the booty with the strong. Because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he himself bore the sin of many and interceded for the transgressors. So that was Isaiah 53, 12. We read in Mark 15, 27 to 28. And they crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, and he was numbered with the transgressors. So, so far, that's that's quite a few prophecies that I've mentioned. I'm going to I'm going to mention a few more as well, because this is important. Um, of all the books that I've read. 
over my years of being alive. The Bible so far is the only one that's got this um, idea of a prophecy and then there's a fulfillment of that prophecy. And all the religious books out there, there's not one prophecy that I can see that is far greater in uh, detail and accuracy than the one in the than the ones in the Bible. You know, so so when pe when Jesus was um, and people saw Jesus, he people shook their heads at him. And we find in Psalm one hundred nine twenty five. I also have become a reproach to them. When they see me, they wag their head. Matthew 27, 39 says these words. And those passing by were hurling abuse at him, wagging their heads. The people ridiculed him. Psalm 22, verse 8 in the Old Testament says in the prophecy, Commit yourself to the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him because he delights in him. In Matthew 27, 41 to 43, in the same way, the chief priest also along with the scribes and elders were mocking him and saying, he saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him now come down from the cross and we shall believe in him. He trusts in God. Let him deliver him now. If he takes pleasure in him, for he said, I am the son of God. Wow. So there's a few prophecies. Um, I'll read another one. Um, it says here, his heart was broken. So in the book, in the Psalm 22, 14, it reads, I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within me. In John 19, 34, it says this of Jesus, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately there came out blood and water. Note this, the blood and water running out of the pierced side presented an evidence that the heart had literally burst. Wow. And it also says in, I think it's 1 John, it mentions he came not by water, but by water and blood the water the blood and the spirit and these three agree as one so that that's an interesting thing to consider so um his side was pierced in zechariah 12 verse 10 the prophecy the prophet says and i will pour out on the house of david and on the inhabitants of jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication so that they will look on me whom they have pierced and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only son and they will weep bitterly over him like the bitter weeping over a firstborn. Wow, it says in Colossians that Jesus is the firstborn of over all creation and that is not referring to his, the fact that he's created. Firstborn means a title that he is that he is like the firstborn over all creation. He has, he is the rightful heir. He is the one that stands at the right hand of the Father, who is King over creation. So it's his rank and title. So in John nineteen thirty four to thirty seven, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately there came out water and blood. And he who has seen has borne witness, and his witness is true. And he knows that he is telling the truth so that you also may believe. For these things came to pass that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not a bone of him shall be broken. And again, another scripture says they shall look on him whom they pierced. Wow. We know also that Jesus was buried in a rich man's tomb, Joseph of Aramaeus. In Isaiah 53, we read the following passage from chapter 9. His grave was assigned with wicked men, yet he was with a rich man in his death. Because he had done no violence, nor was there any deceit found in his mouth. In Matthew 27, verses 57 to 60, 
And when it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who himself had also become a disciple of Jesus. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given over to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a large stone against the entrance of the tomb and went away. So their messianic prophecies. I've also done this list as well. I hope you can see that. So I'll just put it in front of the screen for a second. You can just see the references and you can see the fulfillment and the, the sorry, the prophesy, the prophecy of the scripture about Jesus and the fulfillment of it. And it's all here. So concerning his birth, it says here that he was born of the seed of a woman. Genesis 3.15. And the fulfilment is in Galatians 4, verse 4. He was born of a virgin, Isaiah 7, verse 14. And it's fulfilled in Matthew 1, 18 to 25. The seed of Abraham, the seed of Abraham. Messiah be, is in the seed of Abraham. Genesis 22, 18. Matthew 1, 1, fulfilment. Seed of Isaac, Genesis 21, 12. Fulfilled in Luke 3.23 plus 34. Um, he was born in Bethlehem, Micah 5 verse 2. Fulfilled in Matthew 2 verses 1 to 6. King Herod kills the children, Jeremiah 31 verse 15. Fulfilled in Matthew 2, 16 to 18. Concerning his nature... He pre-existed creation, Micah 5 verse 2, fulfilled in 1 Peter 1 verse 20. He shall be called Lord, Psalms 110 verse 1, fulfilled in Acts 2 36. He shall be called, he will be called Emmanuel, which means translated God with us, Isaiah 7 14, fulfilled in Matthew 1 22 to 23. He was a prophet. In Deuteronomy 18, 18 to 19. Acts 3, 18 to 25 confirms that, fulfills that prophecy. He's a priest in Psalm 110, verse 4. Fulfilled in Hebrews 5, verses 5 to 6. He's a judge. Isaiah 33, 22. John 5, 22 to 23. He's a king, Psalm 2, verse 6. In John 18, 33 to 37, Jesus is the king of the Jews. Jesus is anointed by the Spirit, Isaiah 11, verse 2. Matthew 3, verses 16 to 17, Jesus anointed by the Spirit. His zeal for God, Psalm 69, verse 9, fulfilled in John 2, 15 to 17. I would urge you also to look up these references as well and compare them. Go back over the video and compare them and you'll see, you'll get a picture. It'll, it'll form a picture who the real Jesus is. Okay. So, he was raised from the dead. Psalm 16, 8 to 11. Fulfilled in Acts 2, 24 to 31. Begotten as the Son of God. Psalm 2, verse 7. Fulfilled in Acts 13, 32 to 35. It also mentions the begotten Son of God in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. He's seated beside the Father, Psalm 110, verse 1, fulfilled in Hebrews 1, verses 3 to 13. You see, the only way that Bible scoffers can explain away this astronomical probability is to discredit the prophecies in one way or another. Their only alternative is to accept that God is the author of the scriptures. The Bible is a reliable book of genuine divine prophecy. You can trust it. So the evidence of divine prophecy presented here is just a tiny portion of the proofs available to establish the divine origin of the Bible. Yet they are more than sufficient to prove the inspiration of the Bible. 
There will always be men who scoff at the Bible. You, however, can be confident when you read your Bible that God is the author, for it is written. We constantly thank God that when you receive from us the word of God's message, you accepted it not as the word of men, but for what it really is, the word of God. 1 Thessalonians 2.13 So there you go. We've got biblical prophecy that has been prophesied and then we see the fulfilment of that in the scriptures. I've mentioned in an earlier video that there is archaeological evidence for the Bible as well and that's something that I'm going to get into a bit more as well. So it's the Bible's full of prophecy. It, it's, it, historically it's sound and the archaeology of the Bible is is numerous the amount of things they found so yeah, the Bible is true, it's trustworthy, and I just urge that you put your trust in Jesus Christ, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you.